Good morning. It's good to be with you again. And of course, this is a little bit different. Uh, last week, I know I didn't have anything on because I was with my my parents. My dad had a, um, a partial knee replacement. I was up there and I didn't get back until late Saturday evening. So there just uh, was no time to record anything for that. So I do apologize for that. Uh, for this week, I won't have anything except for this one here. And the reason is, is that we are having a couple of missionaries who are coming to speak. And um, some of the things, so we're not going to pre-record or broadcast anything that they are going to be saying because of, unfortunately, the kind of world that we live in, in some places where they travel across the world, um, you really kind of have to keep things a little more protected, if you will. So we won't be broadcasting any of that. But I am going to share something with you that I believe that the Lord has kind of been putting it on my heart. And that is that, you know, sometimes we get, we get, you know, we get the Bible, right? Here we go. Got the Holy Bible. And it's kind of like we look at this and we're like, Hey, cool. You know, it's kind of a neat book. It's a, it's called the narrative of God. It's a historic book, you know, and it's our religious book. But does it have anything to do with real life? Well, you know, it actually it does. It has a lot to do with real life, including the Old Testament. And you look at the Old Testament narratives and the accounts of like the, the kings and so forth. What you'll do is you will find that, um, believe it or not, those stories actually sometimes you kind of like relive them. For example, there's, there's one that's in, I'm just going to give you some very brief, brief details. There was a king, very prominent king in Israel. He's getting older and his son was about to take over and his son then did take over. And the problem is that the father, who was incredibly prosperous, um, when he died, the people were like, Phew. he worked us really hard, heavy tax burden. And they said to the king, you know, the crown prince who was going to be crowned king, say, hey, look, you know, give us a break. We're tired. You know, we, we just, we just, you just got to ease off on this. And so what he did was he, he, he went and said, give me three days. Give, give me a little time. So he went and spoke to two different groups of counselors. One group of counselors said, you better listen to them. If you listen to them and you give them at least some of what they're asking for, you know what? You'll win them over. But the other, but then the other group said, no, you need to show them who's a boss. Okay. All right, I'm going to read this here because I believe in our world right now, we have a Rehoboam moment that's going on. And the question is, which path are they going to take? Well, we'll see. So Rehoboam went to Shechem for all the Israelites had gone there to make him king. Okay, so that's where they had gone. There. And when they got there, verse four says, the people said to him, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us and we will serve you. So they're exact. that's what the people are saying. They're like saying, look, your father worked us hard. We did a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of taxes and all this stuff. You know, we just need a break. Just let us just ease back off of us. Okay. So that's what they were going to do. So Rehoboam answered, go away for three days and then come back to me. Okay. He's going to get some counsel. I mean, it's a wise decision. He's like, okay, I hear you. So give me a chance to think about this, what we're going to do. Okay. So the people went away. Then he consulted with the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people? He asked. They replied, if today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. That's their advice. Say, look, listen to them. Don't You don't want to lose them because if you do, you won't get them back. Just hold on to them. You know, just, just serve them and, and listen to them. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders, gave him a consult of the young men who had grown up with him and were, servants, were serving with him. He asked them, what is your advice? Verse 11, it says, young men who had grown up with him replied, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam, as the king had said. Come back in three days. The king answered the people harshly. Rejecting the advice given him by the elders, he followed the advice of the young men. So he answered them harshly. So this is a Rehoboam moment. And actually what happened with Rehoboam was, uh, as was prophesied, he, 10 of the tribes said, forget it. We're out of here. And they left. And um, Judah stayed with him. Benjamin did. And then eventually a lot of the Levites and stuff also did too. But really overall, he, he lost a lot, of the, uh, a, lot of, a lot of his nation because of his foolishness, of his bravado of showing who's boss. I say there's a Jeroboam moment. It's kind of like, that's an interesting story, but you know what? Uh, excuse me, a Rehoboam moment. And how does that have to do with our life today? Well, I believe we do have a Rehoboam moment, and it, to a certain extent, is going on in Canada to our north. Um, you know, Canadian people, I've met many of them. I've been to Canada myself. 
it's, 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 a, it's a great it's a great place and the great folks and uh, certainly there's been a lot of protests that have been going on in case you haven't heard um the, the trucker and farmer protests that have been going on against saying that look we want to lift all mandates it's not just about the covid vaccine i mean that was kind of the thing that pushed it over the top but there's passport mandates there's masking mandates there's segregation of society if you have this you can do if, you, if you've taken this health thing you can do basically what they're saying is that we want life to go back the way it was two years ago this is not asking for something they never had this is asking to say can we just return to what we had and let and trust people the citizens to make their own health choices other countries are doing this actually starting to and so they're kind of like can we do this as well we have states in america that are doing this so why can't they're, they're like let's just go back to this so they they have instigated or initiated they have blockades at coots i think is how you say it c-o-u-t-t-s or something like that um they also near milk river which is uh, the border between alberta and montana uh, there's also one between manitoba and north dakota i can't remember the name of that town there uh, the crossing there and then of course the ambassador bridge which was the big one um and between detroit and windsor and of course there there's over 300 million dollars plus of of trade goods that go between the countries across that bridge is the, the busiest economic uh, crossing in North America. Obviously, they had a big impact for five straight days. They had it blocked and now here on Saturday, it looks like that blockade is now being lifted as heavy police presence, but it's been very, very peaceful. Regardless of, of what is, uh, whether you agree with them or disagree, whether you feel that they, they have every right to do this, or you feel that they're, they're not, they're wrong in what they're doing, it doesn't really matter. I'm not here to talk about right or wrong, or whether their position is correct or not. I'm just kind of giving it to you what their position is. Now, why do I say that this is a Rehoboam moment? I say this is a Rehoboam moment because what we have is, is that in Canada, they don't have state systems, state governments. They have provincial governments, so they have provinces, okay? And the, the individuals who lead the province are called premiers. The premiers kind of like governors, and then over them, you have the prime minister and the, and the central government, the federal government, if you will, that's in Ottawa. And that's, of course, Justin Trudeau. Well, what happened is that you have some provinces like Alberta, Saskatchewan. And I believe that there's a couple of the, in the northeastern section, too, that are they're, they're beginning to lift or um, ease back their, their mandates. And in response to what's been going on, they hear it. It's time to do it. Even one even said called upon the national government to eliminate the mandates as well. So there, there's an impact that's happening. But there's also in the in the national government and in one of the core pro provincial governments more in the east, they have not taken a position of listening. They took the position of Ray Baum listening to the younger folks and saying, I want to show you who's boss. So on Friday, they came down very, very harshly. Um, they came down very um, even hard, actually wanting to take even harsher action against. And um, so I don't know how this is going to come about. I don't know where it's going to lead. But the point is, is that what I, what I want to make here is that God has given us his word for a reason. He's given this, this narrative of God. Does it include every single event? No. But he's given us enough because he wants us to learn from it. And what we see here in Rehoboam, going back in biblical times, is a, young, is a man who was leading in his people. And the people were saying, and it probably wasn't every single person, but it was a, 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 a loud enough group of them that were saying, you need to back off. And he said, no, I'm going to show you who's boss. He wasn't humble. He didn't listen to the people. And he lost a good chunk of his country. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in Canada but I will say is that there is a, a, a decent portion um, somewhere based upon some polling, almost a third that say, yeah, I support what's going on. So there's a vocal contingent there that is going before and saying, kind of like they did the Ray of Boehm, look, you put a heavy burden on us the last couple of years and, and you just continue to keep doing it. We need to get back. We, we, you need to ease off. We need to get back to living again. Just back off a little bit. Give us a break. Some are listening. <clears throat> but some are like, I'm going to show you who's boss and trying to come down even harder. And the thing is, is that we know from, from what happened with Ray Boehm, that doesn't work. But it's not just about provincial governments and, and everything like that. It's about our lives too. Anytime we're in a position of authority, whether we happen to be parents, 
um, or even grandparents, or maybe we happen to be leading some sort of little group, uh, whether it's a small group at our house, whether it's something dealing with our retirement community um, leading group or governing planning group or governing group or whatever you want to call them, a homeowners association type of thing. Or maybe it's a thing where I'm at school and I'm part of the, the class, you know, the government of the school or I'm part of the, um, the planning committee for graduation or planning for uh, trips or senior trip or something like that. Or maybe I have to be a, a, at work. I'm a boss at work or, or maybe I'm a supervisor at work or I'm, I'm the shift advisor, whatever it is. I'm the head of that receiving or something like that. Or maybe I happen to be... Um, you know, I, I, I'm on a school board um, or maybe in church, I'm a leader, I'm an elder, or I am a pastor or I'm or whatever the position happens to be. We have or, or in a civic organization, you know, I've risen up into the point where I am in, in charge. I have more responsibility. I'm the president or vice vice president of this group or something. Sometimes that authority can come to us and we can use it in a way that well, we think this is right. This is right. This is right. But then people start saying, you know what? You need to back off because it's, it's too much. They, they start saying, you, know, you just got to give us a break. You're, you're asking for too much. You're pushing too hard. You're, you're doing too much. And when you're doing that, the lesson from Rehoboam is that we listen to those who are talking to us. And we listen to what they're saying. And we need to humble ourselves and realize that we don't always know every single answer. I don't know every answer. I don't always have the right. And I realize I got to humble myself and listen because, you know, God may be speaking through them, through the other, because God doesn't always just speak through his word. He doesn't always just speak through his Holy Spirit. He speaks through other people and circumstances and helping us through the power of the Holy Spirit and his word to, to open our eyes and, and our ears and our hearts and our minds to realize, whoa, maybe I've gone a little too far. Maybe you're right. Maybe I do need to back off. Maybe I do need to pause. And you know what? When we do that, we will gain and actually increase our effectiveness as a leader. Rather than, no, I'm going to nail you, show you who's boss. That actually decreases our effectiveness as a leader. Because we want, the idea of being a leader is that I'm a servant leader. I serve and others serve with me. If I'm just leading and not serving, and I'm just there being authority, 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 come down hard, you know, I can be a leader, but you know, if nobody's following me, I'm not a leader. And actually, we should not be having people following us anyway. They should be following, you know, Jesus. That's not really Jesus back there. It's just a picture depicting him, but you get the idea. We are to follow him. I'm to follow him. Rehoboam chose to reject wisdom. He chose to reject the way of God. He paid the price for that. And I hope in Canada they don't pay the price for it either. But I hope and pray that in your life, in my life, that we will always listen to what God has to say. We'll listen to his word. We'll read his word. And then when we're in a position of authority, we'll always be humble and listen to those that we have authority over. Listen to what they're saying. And be humble and be a servant leader, not an authoritative leader. That's all just what I wanted to share with you here this, uh, for this morning. And it was a little bit shorter, but I just wanted to have something. It's just something that's been rumbling around in my mind because it certainly has made news. At first it didn't in the United States, but now it's making bigger, bigger news because the Ambassador Bridge and the impact it was having on the auto industry um, of actually causing that they weren't getting the supplies and everything in that they wanted to. So it was obviously making a big impact. Um, and of course, some of these uh, um, freedom convoys are are developing in other parts of the world. There's rumors that it's going to start in the United States too. I don't really know where they're going to go, what's going to happen. But I will say this in one closing thought. God has placed in our hearts. He's made us we made us in, in his image and his likeness. So we are to reflect him. So inside we have something the Bible talks about how we have eternity in our hearts. But I believe he also designed us to be free. And that is to use what we have been given for his glory and to benefit and be a blessing to others. And um, there's just this freedom to be able to use that. And I believe it's something that when the enemy tries to squash it down so far, there's a point where people will say, you know what, I want freedom. And that's kind of what's happening in our world is that there are many who say, I, I, I want freedom, particularly over my own life and my own body choices. Give me freedom um, to do, to make my health choices, not you or someone else making them for me, particularly if I'm able to. 
So uh, it is it is interesting what is going on in our world. Um, but, you know, we can have government freedom given by the governments. Uh, we can be free from restrictions and so forth. But the ultimate freedom is actually when we find that our sin can be forgiven in Christ. Without that forgiveness, we will carry that burden. We will carry that weight. We will carry that um, restriction upon our lives because it will always have the past that, that weighs upon us, that guilt that weighs upon us. <clears throat> and it's kind of like you always have this. You have to show your papers. Yeah. Okay. I got, I got to show you. This is my guilt. I'll be reminded of it. It's like it's always constantly being reminded and there are street signs, you know, saying, hey, you know, you're a sinner. You're guilty. And you just see that all over the place. And just like you're going around, you talk about how, oh, vaccine required here, passport here, mask required here. I'm just reminded of this everywhere. I want to get away from it. That's the same thing we want to do with our sin, isn't it? I want to get away from it. And there's only one way. And that's through Jesus Christ. He will forgive you. That's where the ultimate freedom is. And we got to remember that God, our Heavenly Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, He is the author of liberty, the author, the author of true freedom. I pray that you have found him. If not, you can find him today by just saying, God, forgive me. I want to be free. So please set me free because I believe in you. It's basically all it really takes. Confess to your mouth that he is Lord and believe in your heart that he's raised, him, raised Jesus from the dead and says you will be saved and you will be forgiven because he is faithful. All right. God bless. And we'll see you another time.